now that we've finished putting the foliage in uh, it's time to cap these walls off um, I'm just using these coffee stirring sticks here and uh, to represent the stone you can either use a coping saw or a razor saw and just score the coffee stirring sticks every four or five mils um, just to create uh, the capping stones and once it's painted as you can see for these ones back here it looks like capping stones and as you can see it's not a very straight wall so I'm gonna have to cut these down every so often to follow the bend as you will see course from there to there we've got a nice straight bit so that'd be ideal for that bit there and so basically we just PVA wood glue them on and then just put a weight on to keep them on there while the glue's going off um, if the coffee stone stick is just slightly bent then just straighten it out it's probably better to have the bend on the inside so when you put the weight on it will flatten it right so all we do now is just add some wood glue so I'm just doing this for the benefit of you guys who have not seen me do these capping stones before wiping off some of the glue and then just placing the weight on the wall and then we'll leave that to dry uh, the next bit as you can see we're starting to bend now so I just cut the cap and stones to suit the bend so in this place which is just three stones it on then we just follow the bend all right I'll get a q-tip in a minute and wipe the rest off so there you follow the method so every three or four just follow the bend sometimes you might just have to sand the corner back to get it to follow but uh, that's through experience and here we are back at the bench um, with a wills kit um, double oak gauge scenic series it's a yard crane um, the last time I made one of these it was a white metal crane and uh, that was some time ago and here it is um, this one must have made this oh about two years ago and uh, I remember having a bit of bother with the hook here I think I accidentally melted it or something and I had to um, somehow fuse it back together with a bit of solder wire but I uh, managed to do it and uh, this one, I can't remember who made this kit now. But uh, yeah, this one belongs over at uh, Newhustle Goods Yard. So, let's make another one. This time, it's a plastic version. So, let's have a look see what we get inside the box. Right, we get our instructions quite basic and here it is this is going to take a few minutes to put this together it's not going to take long so I've removed all the components from the flashing except for the cogs and the two bearings and the handle um, we'll save that for later so I'm just looking at the drawing here 
and uh, these are the bits I want to put together first so we can put them together them together them together and those together so we'll glue them together first and then we can do the main assembly after now then it says here drill a 2.5 hole into the layout to take the pivot pin which is on here but what I want to do instead I want to make a base up that sits on this big heavy washer with a hole in it so it spins around on this washer rather than gluing it to the baseboard rather do that let the whole thing spin on this plate here so I've had a little bit of a think about it um, about how I'm going to mount this onto a base and um, basically as I said earlier I do not want to drill a hole into the baseboard so what I'm going to do I'm going to make glue these components onto here permanently and then cut that tab off at the end there and then drill a hole into it and then put a screw in there and then this little base I've just made I went out to the shed and um, drilled some well they're not drilled but I've just piloted these holes so that is going to be the base of the crane so I'm going to make the crane up drill a hole in the center and then put a screw underneath into this piece so the whole thing will spivel on that there and not um, on the baseboard so I've kind of thrown the rule book out the window and um, what I'll do I'll build the kit up as per instructions but uh, except that last bit where you got to drill a hole into your platform so the base here I've got to make sure that it does not interfere with the circle pad that we've got on that 8mm penny washer just make sure I've got a little step up oh, there, that's it that's that there Okay, so that's the framework done. So I'm just about to glue the shackle to the main jib. Now I've just cleaned up just to make sure there's no no flashing on the ends. Right, I'm gonna leave that to dry square so I've added the nut and washer on the top and what I've done here is, is I've drilled a hole into this main stem if you like of the crane and basically screwed the screw in took the screw back out put lots of contact adhesive into the hole and screwed the screw back in and what's actually happened now is the screw has set in that shaft and the whole base turns. You can see that there, look, see the screw's not moving. 
So I'm going to fit the main jib now and the supporting crossbars and hopefully the weight of the washer and the chain and everything will stop this from tipping over. So that glue's still a bit damp in the minute so I'm going to get one of these on there quickly before that glue goes off. It goes on there. It goes on there. Right, just got to get the other one on. Try and twist that chip around a little bit because it's still soft. Don't know why I'm whispering. Got a habit of doing that. So what I've done now is I've um, glued the crank handle onto these sprockets here. But what I haven't done is glued it this side. And I've added a 8BA nut which actually screws onto that piece of plastic running through both of those holes. So in effect I've got a handle now that turns. As you can see, and all I've done there is dropped a little bit of super glue on the edge into the nut. So we're almost ready for. As you can see, I have painted the um, framework of the crane and the base plate. Now the base plate, I mixed a little bit of this copper paint. Uh, number 93 with a little bit of black satin uh, just to give it this nice bronzy weathered look so I like the, the look of that so all that's left to do to this is to paint these three frames here in white paint the head of the crane in red and paint some these cogs in silver paint the handle white and that's about it then we can add the chain now the chain is the same chain I used for the bolster wagon and I've managed to hook it up to the hook with a tiny tiny piece of copper wire I don't know if you guys can make that out but there is a tiny piece of copper wire there which is looped into the eyelet of the hook and then through the chain So that's the paintwork done. Um, I'm still a bit tacky, so we shall leave this to dry. Um, the good thing is putting that big 12 mil washer on the bottom really adds weight to it, and uh, it can just sit on the platform. So the next time you'll see this is with the block and tackle and the chain on. And it should be on the layout. Meanwhile, back on the baseboard, as you can see, I have now painted the tops of these capping stones. Um, yellow base coat and a mixture of greys, blacks and greens with a little bit of white thrown in to get the right texture of colour. So that's, that's that done. So we're at the point where we can fit these gates and uh, these gates have a no entry sign on them and also the LNER um, railway um, rules about trespassing 
So that one goes on that side. And this one goes on this side. So I shall glue these in place. Ah, you know what you're thinking, what I'm thinking? The way bridge is not there. Yep, I've cut it off. The reason being is we need more room for vehicles to get around. So I've cut it off. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to glue it in place permanently. Um, but further up this way. You shall see. So I've managed to peel it off the card and it's still kept its um, imprint on there which is uh, good. So all I've got to do now is just glue that in situ in front of the Waybridge office. Um, it should have gone in the middle of the building all along. And again it was sticking out too far as well so just by bringing it in a little bit closer roughly there And then there was light. So that's one building back where it should be. So now we've just got some other odds and ends to do, like the yard crane and maybe some extra lampposts. Oh, you're back again. Um, ah, you've caught me now, haven't you? Um, yes. I'm in the middle of painting some lamp posts because um, we need at least a at least a couple for the inside the yard and I don't want to use great big yard lamps because um, that's not warranted there so I'm using these um, little lamp posts now we have the yard crane in place and the hardest part was fitting the chain through that block and tackle at the top there and then fitting it through the windings I just spin this round you can see the chain comes down through the windings onto the main um, driving handle if you like It is super glued to the base, but I've only put a couple of dabs of super glue on there um, just to keep it in place. Now, the idea is uh, a wagon could come along, pick up the load, and then chuck it straight onto the back of a lorry. I did think about putting it over there, but uh, it's too close to the signal box, I think. So, where it is is ideal. As you can see, the station's now back um, on the baseboard, and that doesn't have to make a difference there having that back. You can see why I've had to remove it in the first place, just to put a little bit of green along that edge from the floor along the brick walls there. And as you can see, I've added two lamp posts, one just at the top of the stairs there and the other one at the entrance so we're slowly getting there so the next thing I want to tackle is a little bit of paving here so I can put the bush shelter in and here we have an original 
South Shields bus on the way to Simon's side. Strike and livery. This is how I'm going to do the paving. Um, as you can see, I've slipped uh, a very thin piece of card underneath the building there. Um, it's only under the building by about five millimeters. Just there. So what I'll do now is I shall mark out where the building is all the way around this edge with a really sharp pencil and I can work out where to put the pavement slabs because I'm using the um, mid-calf individual stones as it were so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark it out 24mm um, from this corner out 24mm from that corner out and then this paving along here will be 30 millimeters wide all the way down through to at least that corner and then we revert back to 22 millimeters here is some of the paving I've done in the past um, so I'm using the same technique but this time I'll be sticking it onto card rather than paper What I'm do, doing here is I'm using the radius of this Medcalf card to create the shape I want for the paving so that uh, this can be glued straight onto the card. And now I have my basic shape. As you can see we have a little sort of sweep here um, so the bus can come in and then sweep out again. So that's a nice slight radius there. And this is where the bus stop's going to be. So as you can see, I've cut the shape out now. And I'm not too worried about the grey and the black here because the road will have another coat of paint uh, once all the paving's in. So I'm quite happy with that shape so far. So what I'll do now is I'll start gluing the curb edging in and then we'll start putting the slabs in. And then when we come to do the last bit we can just um, pull it out. There's a reason why I've done it this way because this part of the card here you're going to see and I want to be able to paint that grey. So this will have to come back out once all the slabs are on. As you can see we've moved on a little bit. Um, we've come right up to the edge of the building. And what I'll do is I'll do that all the way along and then round the corner and up as far as this um, bit of brick wall between these two doors. And I'm going to leave that and we'll use that to match up with the next a lot of paving and uh, I've also cut another template here for the paving going that way uh, on this side of the road there won't be any paving here it might just be a little curb I might put a curb in I think that's all it will need so um, yes what I'll do is we'll concentrate on this one now and get this one in and done and then it'll look like we've got the entrance to the goods yard finished so with this template we're going to be gluing it straight down onto the baseboard but before we do I just want to mark a few positions um, because I want at least a hundred millimeters for the road And that looks about right. So if we place that on the edge of the wall there and there, there'll be a little bit of a curb here. Uh, yeah, so that's where we'll go. Let's just stick that. Yeah, so just mark 
just in a couple of places so we know where this template goes back in. And then we'll just glue this straight down. Um, because there's no buildings or anything in the way with this one, so this can be glued straight away. just the base for paving done. That's just to give me an idea where I'm putting the path, that's all. Right, so now we shall now put all the curb stones on this up to as far as about an inch away from the edge so we can blend the next one in. So here we are putting the slabs down. Um, what I tend to do is put a tiny, tiny dollop of PVA glue onto these slabs because sometimes there's just not enough stickiness on these to keep them in place. So just a tiny bit, not overzealous, but just a tiny bit of PVA glue just to, to lock them in. The reason why I do this is um, many years ago I was, I was hoovering up something on the layout and, and accidentally hoovered up some of these slabs. But uh, that's why I do that now. Just a little tiny bit of uh, PVA wood glue. Right, so that's that bit glued down. I'm um, glad I got that done because it finishes off the entrance to the goods yard and uh, yeah I'm quite impressed with the way that that's turned out um, this bit is still not finished yet I've uh, got a little bit more to do on this uh, which involves painting up these white bits and uh, hopefully next week we shall concentrate on Station Road getting that finished all the way down to the end where the uh, substation is so we've done quite well this week there's, there's a lot done and uh, oh no, no, what's all this then Trotters Independent Trading Co New York, Paris, Peckham and Tyneside well, it is now <laughs> Right, if you want to know more about uh, Independent Trade & Co, Del Boys um, Van, um, look up A.D. Pullen's channel, um, YouTube channel. He, it's not long done a um, review of this van, and he also has left links where to get these from. There's a couple of places where you can get these from. and uh, So if you check out his channel, and you'll be able to look this van up. That's ED Pullen. Right, as I was saying, the, um, the goods yard is, is virtually finished. It just needs a couple of other little details, maybe some figures, and maybe a, a, another lorry or two. But uh, yeah, that's, that's not a bad job done this week. And here's a, a view from the other side. On station side. So I think that's all from me this week and uh, I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and if you leave a comment in the bottom I'm sure I'll get back to you and uh, if you see that magpie on the screen don't be scared to give it a little tap it won't pinch the wedding rings off your fingers it just means you get extra bonus videos. Right Catch you again next time. Bye for now. Bye.